Hello and welcome to this section of the Algebra Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to finally start talking about equations and how to solve equations. In this section we're going to get our feet wet, start talking about equations, what they are, how to identify them, and how to solve simple equations. And in the following sections we'll get to a little more complicated equations, but nothing that's going to be too hard, and we'll kind of build our skills one step at a time. Um, so in algebra, you know, everything really builds and builds to being able to help you solve equations because ultimately an equation is what we really use algebra for most of the time. It's basically a situation when we have something written down and we have an unknown, something that we don't know the answer to, and we're trying to solve that. So in terms of algebra, an equation is really any expression that has an equal sign in there. And so let me give you an example of that. And we'll start out with some simple examples and we'll work on from there. Let me ask you a question. Is this an equation? Well, maybe it doesn't look too complicated, but in fact it is an equation. Why? Because it actually has an equal sign in there. When you think of equation, uh, you, th you should think equal. So equation equals, right? That's how you can remember that. So in this case, this is simply saying that x, the quantity x, which is some variable, is equal to the number 2. All right? Now let me ask you this, is this an equation? Seven times x is less than eight. Is this an equation? So let me actually write down here, yes, this is an equation. Is this an equation right here? And the answer is no, this is not an equation because there is no equal sign here. I have a less than symbol. So it does tell me something. It tells me that seven times whatever x is has got to be less than the number of eight. It tells me useful information, but it's not an equation because it's not set equal to something. So that's really what you need to be looking for there. Um, what if you had something like x plus seven is equal to zero? Is this an equation? And the answer is yes, it is an equation. Why? Because you have an equal sign. And what this is telling me that Whatever x is, I need to be able to add 7 to it, and then whatever I get has got to be equal to 0. What about something silly like 1 plus 1 is equal to 3? Is this an equation? Well, you might not believe me, but it actually is an equation. Now, I grant you, it's not true. This is not a true statement. 1 plus 1 is 2. It's not 3. Um, but it is an equation because it has an equal sign. So what you're doing in algebra is you're trying to to look for places when you have an equal sign, something equal to something else, and that's an equation. Now, whether or not this is true, whether or not it's valid, that's different. That's, and obviously, 1 plus 1 is not equal 3. So you can't say that that's true or valid or even represents reality, but it is an equation. So it's very simple, really, when you're looking to identify if something is an equation or not. And I want to take just a minute to um, kind of talk a little bit about the big picture here. Why do we care about equations? I mean, ultimately, Everything around you is governed by math, believe it or not. Even, you know, things that you do when you go to the playground when you were like a kid. For instance, if you were going to the playground, right, and you decide to take this baseball here, right, and you decide to throw it. You don't throw it horizontal, you don't throw it vertical, you throw it at some angle like this. What's this ball going to do? This ball is going to go fly up, reach some maximum, and it's going to go down and, of course, you know, hit the ground. But it's going to follow some path. And if you throw this baseball at the same angle, at the same speed, you know, one time, two times, three times, four, five times, it doesn't matter. If you throw it at the same angle to the ground, at the same speed every time, and if the wind is the same, and if the ball is the same, and if you do everything the same, then that ball should fly exactly the same every single time. That's that's nature, that's, that's physics. And of course, physics, um, it follows the rules of math, right? So this ball here, um, believe it or not, can be expressed as an equation. You can describe the path by an equation, in other words. In other words, I might have an equation that might describe you know, how high it goes as time goes on. And I might have an equation that describes how far it goes. Because obviously, you know, the distance it travels is going to depend on how hard you throw it and the angle, right, the angle to the ground that you throw the ball. So all of these things can be wrapped up in these equations. So I might have an equation, for instance, that predicts how far this ball is going to travel. And I might, as inputs to that equation, I might have the angle, I might have how hard I throw it, I might have the wind speed, maybe that's another 
part of the equation because if the wind is blowing against this ball, it's going to change everything. Maybe gravity's in there. Obviously, gravity's got to be in there. Maybe we're throwing this ball on the moon, right? If we're throwing the ball on the moon, the gravity's different. There's no wind resistance. The equation changes a little bit. But in any case, if I'm, if I'm interested in figuring out how far it travels, or if I'm interested in the path and the shape of this guy, it's all governed by equations. So I may have an unknown that I care about. Maybe the unknown is the distance that ball travels, right, or something like that. And then I'll have this equation, and I might need to solve that equation for that distance. So I might have all these numbers and variables, and then I need to actually solve the equation for d, the distance that this ball actually travels.